Right, that's worked. Hi, everyone. This is Jamie and David um, from Radio.co, and we join with Valerie Geller. Valerie, can you hear us? Oh, that was my cue to say yeah. hi, David. <laughs> hi, Jamie. Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> I a cup of coffee, and I'm watching you guys, and thinking, yeah. okay, great, no problem. <laughs> Cool, right. Um, right, <laughs> so thanks everyone for, for bearing with us. Um, we finally we finally live and um, we read it. It's always the way, it's technical problems. We're yeah. Something technical. You know, we're talking about podcasting and the internet. And then, you know, thank you, Google, for making our lives a little bit more challenging this morning. Oh. Google God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. This is, uh, at least we're, 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 we're live now. We're ready to go. So, right. So, um, right to, to kick things off. Um, like I said, I'm Jamie. I'm joined with David, and um, let's just let's just flick over to stop screen sharing. This is me, and this is David. Nice to meet you. Hi, everyone. And we'll flick back. This is this. We're in the office at the moment, uh, so we'll flick back to the to the presentation. There we go. Okay, right. Let's get things started. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. Right. So, so, so uh, what what you'll learn? Okay. So, um, what we're going to be covering in this webinar is um, questions answers. So, people. So, um, how to understand your audience? Um, are you an effective communicator? How you can, can become a great storyteller to captivate large audiences, and how to create powerful content, and how to finally, how to finally market that content to your audience. And Valerie Geller, broadcast specialist and coach. So, do you want to take it away, Valerie? Sure. Um, and again, just so if you are watching the webinar or listening right now, just know that we've had some technical issues this morning. If you haven't figured that out already this afternoon if you're in here in Europe. Uh, so what's going to actually be happening right now is Jamie and David are writing the slides, which I'm hoping I'm going to be able to say, you know, in tandem with what's actually going on. Yeah. But in, in a nutshell, what I do is train communicators. I work with podcasters, broadcasters all over the world. Um, having had a background of a number of years in radio, programming radio stations, training on air personalities and talent, uh, and working in news and storytelling and talk radio and working with a lot of morning shows, breakfast shows around the world, to try to help them get, keep, and grow their audiences. And there are a couple of things that all of the work is based on, no matter where you broadcast or podcast, that are 100%, no matter what you're doing. And the first one is, Tell the truth, make it matter, and never be boring. And if you can actually do those three things, there is no problem because what you're doing is going to absolutely work. So the core of all the work that I do is based on those three principles, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring. And I've written four books. The latest is Beyond Powerful Radio, A Communicator's Guide to the Internet Age. And it's really about, no matter the medium, how to be a powerful storyteller and how to engage an audience based on those three items. So I'm not sure what slide people are looking at, so maybe if you can let me know. <laughs> currently, currently we're on um, part one, tell the truth, make it matter, and never be boring. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is the powerful communicator principles. Part two. Yeah, let's go to part two. Yeah. And here are some of the ways that you can make it matter and never be boring and hit the truth. Um, what's really important is to speak visually. And even though you could be working with, with film or video or live online and be looking at things with your eyes, to describe things visually is really powerful. In radio, everybody's taught if you're on the air, make a movie in the mind of the listener. Talk in pictures. You know, radio is theater of the mind. But then what's been really interesting is that brain science has proven when they did the functional MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging of the male brain, they actually found that when the male subject was either given pictures or enough verbal description so that a guy or a bloke could see 
what it was you were talking about. The learning centers in the brain lit up. It was studied and it proved out what we know anecdotally that men are very visual. We know guys are visual sexually, but it turns out they're visual with everything. So the more you can describe something visually, the better it works. And one of my favorite visuals is, if, you know, somebody says, oh, look at the beautiful sunset. Come over here to the window and look at the sunset, or let's go out and watch the sun go down. It's more powerful if somebody says, it's a tangerine sky. You know, the minute you can make a picture, it works better. Start with your best stuff. Uh, very often, and uh, today should not be an example, okay? <laughs> should not use today as your example, but you should start with your best stuff. You should start strong, particularly in a podcast. If you start your podcast with a three-minute read or preamble that's boring, um, people tend to maybe have 30% dropout. You could have one out of three people. If they get bored right away, they don't stick with it. So with podcasting, particularly, you're actually talking to people who have bought the equivalent of a theater ticket to come watch your play. They want to hear what you have to say. So honor them by making the first part of it really, really interesting and start with your best stuff. Engage the listener immediately. Let them know, here's why you need to listen to this, or here's why you need to watch this. Storytell powerfully. Never let anything go too long. Listen. Really hear what people are saying. Also, use your powers of listening for content and material. Uh, you know the expression that, that God gave us two ears, right, and one mouth. So let's you know, double up on that listening. Uh, never put anything on the air or start your podcast if you can't answer the question, why should somebody want to listen to this? Why should I listen to this? And if you could imagine before you push the on button that somebody asks you that question, so, you know, David, if you're doing a podcast, or Jamie, if you're doing a podcast, and somebody says, why should I listen to this? Well, you can learn how to be a better communicator. That's why. Give them the reason they should listen uh, right away. Let's go to the second part of this slide, which I believe is part three. Yeah. Um, talk to each individual listener. This is counterintuitive because logically you understand that people are listening, you know, it's more than one person. But if you talk to one person at a time, it's very powerful. And if you could use the word you instead of we, me, I, us, or our, and always address the listener as one individual, it works better. So instead of, you know, good afternoon, all the people listening out there, or welcome to the podcast, everyone. Glad you're here. Welcome. Glad you're listening. It's more powerful. Talk to one listener at a time. Are you guys hearing that horrible feedback? <laughs> I am, yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. minimize it now, yeah. Do you want to try to get another, um, just so, you know, if you are on the webinar, we are on a Skype uh, audio, so sometimes that can be difficult. Do you want to try to get another Skype audio that's better, or do you want to stick with this one? I think let's just let's just stick with let's let's try and re reconnect and let's go from there. Um, yeah. Oh, just just keep going. No, sorry. Let's 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 reconnect and then let's get a fresh connection. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good idea. Cool. Um, okay, so let's... I'm gonna just um, go back to Skype and recall you on Skype. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, how's that? Yep, that sounds better. Okay, now, unfortunately, I have lost... Um, okay, now we're back. Okay, good deal. Um, so that we're back actually to part three. Address each listener as an individual. Do engaging transitions and handoffs, which means when you go between elements... And this was something really for radio. Uh, I did a lot of work with the BBC. I've done a lot of work with public radio and commercial radio. And somehow, in radio, the parts of programming and news never got the memo to break down the brick walls between the departments. So it was always, we're going to stop now for news, or we have to leave it here because we have to break and go to something else now. And there were these great silos between the music, the entertainment, the public service, and the news. And one of the beauties of the internet age is that there really are no brick walls. The radio is on, the internet is on, or it's off. It's interesting or it's boring, but we don't really have the walls. So to break down the walls and create more of a tapestry rather than a mosaic and connect everything, everything should connect. Um, promote and brag about your stuff and brag about other people's stuff too. Promote effectively. Um, using social media is a great way to promote if you're doing a podcast. 
but word of mouth is still the best promotion ever. And if you do things that are noteworthy, it's it's good to sing about them. It's good to let people know what you're doing. Uh, it's more powerful if other people let people know what you are doing. It always works better when somebody else says it. So if you can brag about other people's stuff, brag about your own stuff, it works. And also encourage other people to brag about your stuff. Stay curious, relax, and allow the humor to happen. The number one thing that will absolutely attract a listener at any time is to make them laugh. And again, going back to the brain science, when somebody laughs, their brain fills with dopamine and they feel great. And when you laugh, the learning centers in the brain open up because you feel good. And when that happens, you actually can take in a lot more information, which is why if you can remember from school that funny teacher you had, a funny professor who was a great storyteller, even if you weren't that interested in the subject, uh, your brain opened up and you learned it. Or maybe you got interested in something you'd never been interested in before because the person made you laugh. When you make people laugh, their brains open up. Uh, it's also true of stand-up comedians. They can also go to very dark, very difficult places where you could never go. You could never talk about this in normal conversation. But because you're laughing, you can explore these things. Laughter is very powerful. If you're relaxed, the humor can happen. If you're uptight about it and tense and stressed, forced humor never works. Be who you are. A good question when you listen to a podcast or you listen to a radio show, do you know the presenter? Do you know the personality? Do you feel connected to the person that's talking to you? All the great personalities, when you look at research, people say, I feel like I know that person because I'm listening to them on the radio. Are you offering enough authentic self-revelation so that the audience feels connected to you? I will never forget. <clears throat> Sorry, I think it was I think it was Chris Moyles, but it might have been Terry Logan. Uh, some research in the UK, and one of the listeners wrote, when he goes on holiday, that's when my family and I book our vacation because we don't want to be in England when he's not on the radio. And that's powerful radio. That's a connection with a personality. And when I read that, I thought, that's my new dream for all of the people that I work with. I'm hoping that they get that kind of a response from their audience. If you can allow enough authentic self-revelation. And again, do this using the word you instead of I. Try that and let the audience know who you are. It will deepen the connection that you have as a personality and it will help you win. And take risks, dare to be great. Um, it's very easy to do okay with craft, skill, and training and playing it safe. But unless you try stuff, and roll the dice, and if you think it's going to work, then it will. And the internet, particularly podcasting, allows us a place to try things that we actually couldn't do on terrestrial radio. It's a whole new canvas, and it's really exciting. And it's the people who are trying things that are winning. It's not the people who are doing the same old, same old. It's people who have an idea, and they try it. The success formula for any business is product permanence promotion. Do a good product. Do it consistently over time and let people know where they can find it. And that's for any business, including broadcast, audio, video, podcast. Cool, yeah. Okay, now going to the next slide. Um, on it, Beyond Powerful Radio. Right there? Yeah, sorry. Beyond. Okay. On the next slide is actually the book, Beyond Powerful Radio, all of the things that we're talking about. Beyond Powerful Radio is a cookbook. And it is, I mean, there's all kinds of things in there. If you're on air, <clears throat> if you're producing, if you're doing the news, uh, if you're working in sales and marketing, if you are working in research, if you're trying to figure out the audience, uh, if you're working in, in promotion, uh, trying to come up with ways to create copy, uh, writing commercials. Uh, it's, a, it's really designed like a cookbook. So if you're interested, if you go to beyondpowerfulradio.com, you can look at a table of contents and then um, what's up on the screen, the slide for the book, is Focal Press Rutledge has offered, they're a UK-based and US uh, uh, basically publisher, and they're offering this globally for a 20% off discount. And I've actually been told that uh, they're going to keep that code, SRK89. If you, if you go to this particular website, which is their website, which is bit.ly Beyond uh, Powerful Radio, we do it through the, the Rutledge website. 
they'll give you the 20% discount. Um, going now to, let's see, the next slide. And you guys wanted to talk about um, life stage demographics, is that right? Yeah, we want to we want to cover the life stage demographics, or um, aka knowing your audience, who your audience are, like you just mentioned. So okay, I'm having a little trouble understanding you guys. Could you crank up your volume? Yeah, sorry. Let's just crank that up. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, and I lost a picture of you guys, but that's okay. All right, life stage demographics, which is a huge chapter in my book, and it was kind of breakthrough when I first started working with life stage demographics. Now it's very, very standard. What happened 15 years ago was that we were doing focus groups in America. And we had a group of women who were between the ages of 18 and 24. And the focus group was being done in a shopping mall. And the group of 18 to 24 year old females, they were leaving. And the next group of 25 to 54 year old women were coming in. But we were doing this in a town where um, it was a pretty central shopping mall, shopping center. And one of the women stopped one of the 18 to 24 year old young women and said, Tiffany, how are you? And Tiffany said, Greta. And they began to talk. And Tiffany said, what did you guys decide to do about buying the minivan? And she said, oh yeah, we got it. And how was your vacation at Disney World? Oh, it was great. And is Elaine over her cold? We haven't seen you at baby swimming. What was happening was that a woman who was 45 years old with a small child and a woman who was 19 with a small child had the same life and we were putting them in different focus groups. And it was stunning. About two days later, we had a guy who was 22 years old in a focus group. He was managing a shop. He was single, renting an apartment, spending his discretionary income on sporting event tickets, haircuts, a really great car, and spending it on dates. Then, in about two focus groups later, we had a guy who was in his 50s. He was newly divorced. He was renting an apartment. He was managing three small shops. He was uh, spending his discretionary income on sporting event tickets, concert tickets, dating, a great car, and again, renting his apartment. And one thing they had in common, on Sundays, they both went over to their respective mother's houses and their mothers did their laundry. And this was stunning. This was really the beginning of life stage demographics. You could no longer encapsulate the audience based on their age and race and zip code and income. It became, what are their lives like? So life stage demographics was a new way of doing research. And we broke it down into categories of like life stage and like interests rather than age, race, and where they live. And that changed everything. That by working with life stage demographics, we were able to stunningly double audiences, double audiences. And life stage was something that internet started working with early and magazines have always worked with, but radio hadn't. And now that radio has been working with it and we can deepen life stage by understanding who the audience is, uh, you can do a much more powerful radio show and much more powerful podcast and just generally reach your audience. You'll notice it when you hear commercials on air. If you need to buy a new refrigerator, suddenly those commercials about those, you know, home fix-it places that are offering discounts on refrigerators start to become very interesting to you. If you don't need a refrigerator, you can even bother to listen to the commercial. And life stage is a little bit like that. So specifically targeting audiences is fantastic. And with all the mega data we have now to be able to assess who's watching and who's listening, there's no excuse not to specifically target it, a listener and a viewer. If you're on Netflix, this happens to you all the time. If you like this movie, perhaps you'll like that one. If you buy something on Amazon, uh, you'll notice that after you purchase it, if you bought this item, perhaps you'll be interested in that item. 
They haven't quite got it right because once you do buy a flat screen television on Amazon, they ask you if you'd like to buy another. No, we've just bought one. So sometimes they don't always get it right, but they're trying and they're trying to use the mega data that they collect and target it to you specifically. In radio and in podcasting, it's much easier than that because you don't really need to use the tech. You just need to understand life and you need to understand people. And once you understand life stage demographics, it makes it easier. Um, I mean, I hate to go on about it, but um, do you want to go to the specific life stages and what they are? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, is this getting boring? I'm worried about that. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. It's just there's, there's a little bit of an echo from from your end. Um, it's that that's looping back. Is there any way to turn us down on, on your end? Yeah, let's call back. Oh, okay. Valerie's just calling back now. Okay, how's that? Um, Better? I, I, you can still hear me in the background. Okay, is there any? Try it again? Is, not, is there? Is there any way to turn to turn my volume down? Okay, how about that? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, um, I think that sounds better. Yeah, that's great, actually, that's perfect. Right, thanks for that, Valerie. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, getting well, back to the life stage, um, I'm trying to see where, where we are in the life stage. Okay, so the first one was kids. Um, you had several different kinds of kids. Kids broke down to lots and lots of categories. Um, uh, and again, if this gets boring, stop me, because if you have something new interested in life stage, then, you know, it, it's something that I think is really worth paying attention to. And there's an entire chapter on life stage detailing this as much as you ever wanted to know about life stage demographics. Kids broke into a couple of categories. You had the academic kids, kids who are really on the academic track. They love to read. They love to study. They probably will go on to university. And uh, that's their orientation. You had athletic kids, kids who really were into sports, and they really loved that, and they spent all their spare time playing sport, watching sport, and that was something really important. You had trendy kids. It was very important to be up on the latest pop trends of every kind, and they knew the latest bands that were out, and they're online all the time, and you know, they've got, they're always in front of the screen, and they're always doing the latest trendy thing. So again, you had um, lots of different categories of kids. Young men and women. This was before you figured out what you wanted to do. Young men and women were people who maybe they didn't own a, a home. Uh, they perhaps were working at jobs that were just temporary until they found what they really wanted to do in life. They weren't sure yet, so they were trying lots of things. Maybe they're still traveling. And young men and women went all the way up to age 40. You know, people who were still trying to find their purpose in life and what they wanted to do but they were not established and they had really, really different needs than people who um, were employed and on a career track. And again, employed was lots of different levels. Employed means you have just a job or employed means you're in a career track. Just a job means you work a six or eight hour day and you're done. A career track means you work 20 hours a day. You work on weekends, you're thinking about the job when you're not on the job. You're looking to get ahead, you're learning, you're willing to do anything for that career. So, you know, if you talk to somebody who's a very serious actor, they're not working eight hours a day, they're taking classes, they're auditioning, they're watching films in theater, they are working 24 seven to try to build their career. Somebody who's starting a business, they're on their phone in the middle of dinner because they're doing uh, deals and watching what's going on. Somebody who was on a career track is very, very different than somebody who just has a job. So employed was very different. You couldn't just say someone with a job. And the same thing with unemployed between jobs. If you had someone on a career track, they're going to try to wait and get a job in their field. So they could be unemployed for a year, but they're not really unemployed. They're just seeking their next opportunity. Someone who's laid off from just a job, it's a very different situation, and they will take the next job that's available. People who are defined by what they do and their career or people who are just working at a job and their real life is the weekends, the holidays, and their night times are their real jobs. Single, same thing. If you're single and you're not partnered, your purchases were different, your entire life was different because when you're single, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to compromise. It might be lonely sometimes, but there's no compromising. You can take off for a weekend and go anywhere. You can stay up all night. You can eat what you want. You can go out whenever you want. You can spend your money how you want. 
the minute you're in a partnership, the minute you have kids or you're in a partnership, uh, all your spending decisions um, have to do with other people and you have to uh, compromise. Um, retired is relative. Uh, there are people who retire, they shut down their businesses or they leave their jobs after a set amount of time. And there are people who have purpose in life that has to do with being very productive. And then there are people who um, really want to lose your lives. And that can be at any age at any time. If you have the means, if you've done really well in life uh, and you have the means or you inherited, you don't have to work. So now it becomes what do you want to do? If you have retired, but you are burning with purpose and you need to have meaning in your life, you could be 70 years old and be working very, very hard. So again, it's life stage. It really has nothing to do with your age or your demographic. Um, is, does anyone have any questions about life stage demographics? Are there questions? We're going to be taking questions right at the end. Um, so we'll, 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 any questions in? And uh, if anyone got a question, just tweet us. Um, at radio.co uh, and put the hashtag powerful radio. Okay, because um, I think, you know, life stage is a space where if you're working very hard, um, it's, it can be a really fascinating thing. And again, we have double and triple audiences. I'm hearing a lot of feedback. Yeah, I'm, it's just picking up the feedback now. Um, wait, you, you sound okay now, Valerie. Okay. Um, right. Maybe, maybe you cut your mic. I don't know. Maybe it's feeding back. Let's try and let's try and cut my mic. Okay. How's that? That's perfect. Okay. All right. So we'll just go with that. Um, six steps to great storytelling. Again, um, the essence of storytelling. It's part of a model. Focus, engage, opinion, position, storytelling. Focus is what is it you want to talk about, and there are three or four things that people are always interested in, and that's finding focus and finding topic selection. Health and safety, money and power, how your life can be better tomorrow than it is today, and of course, touching the heart, the emotion. Uh, six steps to great storytelling. Uh, let's go through them. Uh, let's see. Okay, start with the ending. Know your ending. And if you want to start with your ending and so the audience knows, in fact, you see this a lot with movies, um, especially in flashback. You already know that the protagonist of the movie has died, and now the whole movie's going to be with a flashback. It doesn't necessarily mean start with an ending, it means know your ending. So you can start with your ending, and that's one crap technique of doing storytelling, and there are a million ways to tell a story. There's no right or wrong way. The right way to tell a story is if it's not boring. The wrong way to tell a story is if it's boring, okay? So one of the 30 or 40 ways that we talk about in the book of how to tell a story is this. Start with the end. Uh, the other way to tell a story is story spine. A story spine is something that was developed by Ken Adams, who is the inventor of theater, and that uses the fairy tale technique. Once upon a time, and then one day. And then, and then, and then, and finally, and the moral of the story is. That's one way to tell a story. Starting with the ending is yet another way. But whether or not you choose to start with the ending doesn't matter as long as you know your ending. The worst thing you can do is go on the air and go down the rabbit hole and not know your ending. Don't be typical. Uh, find ways of saying things that are uniquely yours and in your voice. Talk about characters in such a way and make people care about your character, and that means describe them and use the detail. Use real language, and don't read off the detail. Use real language. Um, and finally, and this is a Tommy Kramer uh, uh, expression, and I love it. Find another camera angle. We call it using the prism method. <laughs> and in the book, it's really under the news sections where we put a lot of our storytelling. But whenever you tell a story, always try to look at it from every angle of who is affected by the story before you tell your story. And then go back and tell it in the most meaningful and powerful way. Because every story affects so many people. So if you're talking about a news story, it's not just the thing that happens. It's how it affects the victims, how it affects the culture, how it affects the society, how it affects the money. Always look at all of the ways the story is affected. Um, Creating powerful content, live or uh, automated, 
if you are pre-recording, it should be perfect. And anything live, like today, anything goes. You know, if things happen, if there are mistakes, it's okay. People understand if it's live. If you're pre-recording, make sure that it's perfect. Because pre-recording, and in point of fact, podcasting, you can edit and you can make it perfect. Um, promote, it's part of product permanence promotion. If you have the best restaurant in the world, but it's secret, nobody knows where to go. If you have the best show in the world and you're proud of it and nobody knows where to find it, then it will never be successful. So once you perfect your product and you're proud of it, uh, promote like crazy. Uh, lots of ways to promote. You can buy promotion. You can use word of mouth. Word of mouth is always the best. Um, how online radio can make you a powerful communicator. Again, online radio is your place to experiment and try things and do things. Online, you can neurocast over the area of the broadcast. So, you know, if you have an overweight aging cat, you can do a podcast, and there will be people who will find it interesting. Um, this is uh, radio.co's data. Do you guys want to talk about this? Yeah, um, we'll we'll check over from here. Um... Hello, I'm David Arvin, here to talk about Radio.co. Uh, just see, tell you what Radio.co can offer to uh, your listeners. With Radio.co, we offer a service of, that's an audio streaming platform, and it offers you the chance to... This, this part about connecting with over 3 billion listeners, um, that, that's really, this is your slide, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, we're all looking at that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and so basically what you guys do is you offer a platform that people want to contact they can do through you, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I have a radio station for you, right? Yes, that's correct, yes. Okay, so what, what's the deal with the 3 billion listeners? Talk about that. Well, the, the thing with 3 billion listeners is we have, you can connect uh, via social media platforms, so such as Twitter, such as TuneIn, which has over 60 million active users at any one time, such as iTunes. So it's really, you're getting your radio station out there, and so it's potentially billions of listeners that can access your radio station. So and um, it offer, obviously like, it offers you the, co the chance to collaborate with your friends and um, you can invite users from all over the world so and contribute with uh, with your staff. So with Radio Co, we offer three users. We offer the DJ who can he can only broadcast live and you can read schedules, view real time statistics. The second is a music controller. You can upload and update files but can't access detailed statistics and analytics. And the third is the station manager who has all the rights of the owner but can't view billing of information. So it's perfect for people, you know, let's say if it's a company that you want to start a radio or just with your friends, you can really let all your friends and all your staff have access to the station. This is great because, you know, I know there are lots of companies that are offering this, but, you know, the expression, you can now have a radio station in your garage, you can now have a radio station in your yes. garage. The coolest thing. Let's go to the next thing. This is how people can get in touch with you, right? Uh, yes, this is um, on the uh, information for a free seven-day trial. Or email if you want to talk to one of us, you can email us and we can give you a demo uh, via Skype. Okay, that's your commercial, that's my commercial, <laughs> um, which is how you, you know, a little bit about the book. And if you go to beyondpowerfulradio.com, you can read more about the book. It's also available in an audio book, which I'm really excited about. It's got a long drive. If you hear me talking in your ear along with 35 other people, uh, a lot of the guest contributors to Beyond Powerful Radio. Uh, went ahead and uh, voiced their parts. You can hear lots of voices. And if you have a long drive, it's something like 16 hours of the audiobook. If you go to audible.com, you can find me on Powerful Radio. And then this is how you can find me. Now, do we have any, now there are questions? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, there, let's get the questions up. I actually can't see them. Let me go back to Skype. Can you put them up on Skype or no? I can't see them. Yeah, we'll 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 read the we will read the questions to you. So the, so the first question that somebody asked um, is so what are, uh, what are common mistakes you see from honor talent and professional communicators? Um, the first mistake is hello everybody, <laughs> hello uh, you know all my listeners out there, hello podcast family. That's the number one mistake is not talking to one person at a time. Have you ever, can you imagine, thank you for being here. Talk to one at a time. If you're talking to many people, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, you'll still want to hear. Always talk to the individual. The second mistake is reading. 
people don't like to be read to, they like to be communicated with. So don't pre-write a long preamble. Don't read, talk to people. Those are the two biggest mistakes. And another question we've just got is, is, uh, is why has there been a shift more towards talent? Like we're seeing this now actually with um, the new radio station. I don't know if anybody out, out there has heard of it. It's called Radio X. It's a new radio station that's just popped up and they're more, the more focused towards talent. And actually so is Beats One as well, which launched a couple of months back. So they're more focused on talent instead of tech. Here's why. You can get the music anywhere. You can't get the people anywhere. You know, and part of what we need to offer is a unique journey. And the unique journey is the human being that's talking to you and curating that music and telling you the stories about the music. So people want to hang out with people and you can get the music elsewhere. You can get the news elsewhere. You can get the traffic elsewhere. You can't get the people elsewhere. So the, the unique journey, the unique experience is complete personality. That's why the work I do developing personalities has become um, something that is very, very exciting because it's the best thing we offer our, our people. And I'll never hire a personality for a radio station if I wouldn't take a five hour car journey with them because you're going to sit with these people. You know, they want, you want to be with people you like and people you feel you know. Personality is everything. And the rule of personality, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring. <laughs> so another question is, how can I sound unique and not a clone of other popular radio station presenters? Because a lot of people, you see a lot of people trying to mimic other presenters out there. And sometimes that, that just doesn't work, does it? Uh, you know, I've written a lot about this in, in the book. Uh, there's something called Frankenstein syndrome, cobbling together the pieces of others, you know, and making a personality like Frankenstein with a piece here and a piece there from other people. There's nothing wrong with imitating people when you are learning and on the journey to find your voice, okay? A great musician will imitate and play in other people's styles, but a great musician doesn't become a star until they find their own style. And part of this is becoming who you are. Who are you? What matters to you? What do you care about? What are your life experiences? What, why do you think the way you think about things? What helped you form your opinions and positions? Um, what are things that excite you? Who you are as a man or a woman is part of what you bring to this. And we have an expression, grow the show, grow the man or woman, grow the man or woman, grow the show. Being who you are, and that means knowing who you are, will give you your unique voice. This isn't about radio and it isn't about podcasting. It's about the struggle to be a human being and helping people get through their lives and get through their days. And you do that with the authentic self. So to my own self be true, to quote Shakespeare, be yourself. And if you don't know who you are, deepen, find out who you are, go on the journey of discovery of who you are, and then share with the audience who you are. And that's how stars are born. And uh, here's, here's a question actually from, from us, radio.co, um, is where do, you, where do you feel the future, what the future holds for, for radio? Where do you feel like it's headed? There's never been a more exciting time because we have this new canvas, the one we're on right now, which is the internet. So what happens is there's a lot out there. The number one complaint about podcasting and about the internet is there's so much out there. How do we decide which one to listen to? How do we find the good stuff? And to quote Jury Ryder, who edited my books, Jury says, there's a lot out there and it's like crude oil. There is plentiful, but it has to be refined. And so the more there is, the good stuff rises to the top, cream rises. And if you have focus, engage, opinion, position, storytelling, if you are unique, if you tell the truth, you make it matter and it's not boring. And in fact, the Beyond Powerful Radio book, and I'm gonna give the website one more time, it's beyondpowerfulradio.com. If you're interested, the book is a cookbook for how to do this. And I work with radio shows all over the world and we've grown audiences because this recipe it always works it doesn't not work you will get an audience if you do these things and you will grow your show with good content good product permanence and promotion mm. we, we've just got another we've just got another question that's just come in now someone's asked um we don't do live broadcasts um but how can we bring more listeners and advertisements to the station okay if you're not broadcasting live i believe 
don't you shouldn't try to fool the audience to thinking it is live. I think that it's okay to say, you know, this is being recorded on Saturday. That's all right. You know, or at the time this is being recorded, she hadn't had her baby yet. You know, it's okay to say those things, to let the audience know it's part of telling the truth. One thing about pre-record is that it should be as perfect as you can make it. It should be exactly as you want it to be. And if it's good, people will find it. In the United States, there is a podcast called WTF. It's hosted by a guy called Mark Marin. And he had the president of the United States fly out to Los Angeles and be a guest on a podcast in Mark's garage, literally, because Mark has so many listeners. And it's spread by word of mouth and it's pre-recorded. So people find the good stuff and that happens through word of mouth. You have to be great. You have to do things where people want to hear it with a unique journey. If they can get it elsewhere, it won't build your brand. But if you're unique, you can build your brand and then use social media to spread word of mouth. One of the uh, one of the things that actually stood out about your book, because um, I picked up a, a free copy when, when I went to the uh, the the, the event in London in September, and I uh, one interesting um, point in it that was made was um, the differences between generators and reactors. Now, can you explain the difference between between those? Yeah, I think a lot of times you'll hear radio shows where they put together a team or a couple, and they haven't really thought it through, and maybe they put two reactors together or two generators together, and there's a magical combination of generator and reactor. So if you have a generator, which is someone that has a million ideas and they're constantly bubbling up with ideas, uh, they love being on mic, they're very happy to say the same thing to one person as they would say to a million people. By the way, generators have a lot of ideas. They're not always good ideas, but they have a lot of ideas. A reactor faces the blank page with terror. You know, if you say to a reactor, okay, you've got two hours to fill, go, they're, they're terrified. But the minute you give them an idea, then they can swing, they can hit the ball back. If you put a generator and a reactor together, it's a magical combination. And again, there's a lot about this in Beyond Powerful Radio. Uh, there's a whole chapter of generator reactor. If you put two reactors together, it's boring. If you put two generators together, they fight for the microphone. And you have heard those programs, <laughs> you know, where no one can get a word in. And so it, it's finding that right combination. The secret of generator reactor is, are you your best self when you work with this person? Can you get places creatively with this man or woman that you can't get to on your own? And that's the magical combination. So um, another another question I just had in is um, what are some um, what are some essential tips, advice for, for people, for broadcasters who are just, just looking to become more personable and, and want to communicate and become more influential to their audience? Well, I think that the powerful communicator uh, principles that we talked about, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring, uh, are the three key principles. And if you stick to those before anything goes on air, does it matter? Are you talking about this because you think it could make a good show? Somebody out there is going to be interested or is this something that you're passionate to talk about? One of the secrets of powerful radio and powerful podcasts is as in life on the air. If you would talk about it off air and it matters to you, you'll find a way to make it matter to people. If the only way you would ever talk about this is with headphones and a microphone, then it may not work as well on air. And with that, I hate to do this because I, I, I think our time is up and, and I'm going to have to run, but I, I really enjoy uh, having this opportunity. I'd like to apologize for all the technical snafus. And my um, Twitter is uh, at the Geller, G E L L E R. And if you're interested, it's gellermedia.com. And the book, of course, is beyondpowerfulradio.com. It's uh, on audible.com, iTunes, and of course, it's a paperback and a hardcover. And it's coming out in French very soon. In March. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, that, Valerie. I think, um, apart from. David and Jamie, thank you guys. I wish yeah. you all the best. Thank so, you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Th thanks, that, Valerie. Okay. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for that. And that was it. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming along. Um, again, thanks to Valerie for taking the time out to chat with us. Hopefully, it was a bit... Um, hopefully, you got quite a lot from this, this webinar. Um, you can always drop us a message um, at uh, hello at radio.co um, or you can get in touch with someone to talk about um, talk about this webinar, just have a, have a chat with us, or you can try out radio.co. 
um, demo. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been great, guys, um, talking to you, and um, all the best. Thanks.